In this lesson, we'll be looking at inverse trigonometric functions. Um, so in the in the syllabus document, it says that we need to find and use the inverse trigonometric functions arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. So essentially what we're looking at is arc sine, so y is equal to arc sine x, would be the same as sine to the negative 1x. We've got y is equal to arc cos x, which would be the same as cos to the negative 1 x and we have arc tan x so y is equal to arc tan x would be tan to the negative one x now i'm hoping that you remember when you're looking at these types of functions you're looking at possible angles that fit the scenario so we're calculating given angles in these scenarios it's also important to understand that there is infinite solutions given that there's infinite coterminal angles. Okay, so you can think of this as a unit circle where we have some x value, some y value, and then some associated um, y on x value. So if you can recall, that x value represents cos, the y value represents sine, and that y on x represents tan. So what we're looking for is being able to find the angles that represent this scenario. For a given x, that x could be on either side. For a given y, that y could be on either side. And for that tangent, being positive or negative, it could be in opposite directions as well. So make sure you understand that these are the inverse of those original sine x, cos x, and tan x functions. And they are not to be confused for 1 on sine x, which is cos x, 1 on cos x, which is sec, and 1 on tan x, which is cot x. These are different. Okay, so these are, these are reciprocal functions where these are inverse functions of our sine, cos, and tan. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at these functions so you can see the differences. Obviously, the outcomes for these are angle values. And when you solve these functions on their own, then you should recall that the angles will be between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, so let's have a look here at Desmos. We'll start by looking at arc sine. Okay, so if we look at that... The function y is equal to sine x. That's a good start. So if you we'll remind you what this looks like. So a sine function, 0 to 2 pi. So you see this 6 here. So it goes to approximately 6.28, which is pi. So that's 1 for rotation of a general sine function. When we look at y is equal to sine to the negative 1 of x, what you can see is that it ranges between negative 1 and 1, and the y values are between, looks to be somewhere around negative 1.6 and 1.6. Now if you think about that carefully, that's half of pi or pi on 2. So between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2, so negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. And so when you're using that inverse sign, that's what we're finding. Now, if you recall, if we throw in this plus 2 pi k, and we'll add in this k slider, and we'll set some conditions to it. We'll say, let's go between negative 2 and 2, and we'll make the steps of 1, depending on what that k value is. 
we have different coterminal angles. So now we've got now we've got when k is equal to one, another solution, k is equal to negative one, another solution, and so on. So there are infinite solutions. So hopefully you can see that as the inverse relationship. If we change this out and we now look at cos and arc cos, let's change this slider back to zero, you can see there's a slightly different outcome here. This is now between zero and about 3.14. And so it goes between an angle of zero and pi. And so that will be repeated when we change the value of k. So again, the outcomes should be the same as when we're just inversing that trig function. All right, finally, when we look at tan, and we change this to tan, you can see that it's a little bit different here. With the inverse tan function, you can see that the values are ranging between about negative 1.57 or negative 1.6 again, up to positive 1.57 um, or 1.6, and that will be half of pi or pi on 2. Okay, because with tan it works in a slightly different way, you can have um, values from negative infinity to positive infinity inserted into that function and still get an outcome. We're looking at that, that maximum angle being pi on 2, so the vertical line or negative pi on 2, which is also a vertical line. All right, so hopefully you can see that, therefore, these functions can be defined by a given domain. Looking at y is equal to arc sine, we've got x is an element that is restricted between negative 1 and 1. And we have arc cos that's restricted between negative 1 and 1. And we have arc tan, where x is an element of a set of real numbers. So really, that's what we're looking at. That's our, our trig functions. Make sure you understand that they're different from those reciprocal functions. And if you want to see that, if we put in sine x and arc sine, of x along with y is equal to 1 on sine x you can see they're all distinct functions so they're different even though there's a there's relationships between them they're not the same thing if we change these all to cosine arc cosine and 1 on cosine Again, you can see they're all distinct and individual functions. And when we look at tan, arc tan, and one on tan, you can see again that they're all distinct and different functions. So as long as you have that understanding, you have that understanding that it's an inverse function. And just to clarify what an inverse function is, an inverse is when for a given function, the variables are swapped. So if we have y is equal to sine x, to create the inverse, we're going to swap x and y. So x is now equal to sine y. The idea is then, if we isolate y, we get y is equal to arc sine of x. So that's our inverse function for sine. For cos, when we take that inverse, we get x is equal to cos y, and therefore y is our cos of x. And for tan, when we take the inverse, we get x is equal to tan y, and therefore the inverse is y is equal to arc tan of x. This can be done for any type of function. 
um, in this case with the inverse trig functions, we're inversing the trig components. Okay, so I hope that that clarifies the basics um, of what inverse trig functions are, what their domains are, and how they're used. Um, remember the goal is to find unknown angles when we're looking at inverse trig functions. Our next lesson will be about the derivatives, and that will lead into the integrals of inverse trig functions. Thank you for listening.